Do you want to know the reasons why you may not want to move to beautiful North Carolina? Well, if you are considering making a move here to the beautiful Tar Heel State, you have to check out this video first, so you stay tuned. I got you covered. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you some reasons why you may want to think twice about moving to North Carolina. So don't get me wrong, North Carolina is a beautiful state with a lot to offer, but just like everywhere, it's not for everybody. And I'm here to give you some, some information on why you may want to reconsider. So if these issues or if these things are a problem, again, you may want to reconsider. So I have lived here my entire life. So I know firsthand what it's like to live here. And if you're considering making North Carolina your home, you should be prepared to deal with these facts. So are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> So number one is the Southern cooking. Okay, as you can see, I know a little bit about food, but <laughs> the food here is amazing. So if you're moving to North Carolina, one of the first things that you'll encounter is our Southern cooking. So while it's undeniably delicious, sometimes it is not the healthiest. So just think about, you know, pulled pork, barbecue and North Carolina already has a war with the barbecue so I'm not even gonna go there on this video fried chicken biscuits and of course sweet tea with enough sugar that's gonna keep you up for days you know it's comfort food at its finest but if you're watching your diet or if you prefer a lighter cuisine then this could be a challenge but as always, moderation is key. So on a positive note, North Carolina does have healthy options. So it's not like everywhere you go all day long, you're just gonna eat bad foods. So we do have healthy options and they're healthy. You know, there are um, restaurants in, in cities all over the state that have healthy options. So you don't have to just sit back and indulge on that bad stuff. You can eat, you know, healthier options as well. But next up, let's talk about the, the flooding here in North Carolina. So, you know, as, as you've been watching the news, we had a hurricane that came through, and this is no laughing matter. We had a hurricane um, that came through and it caused devastation to our, um, to our mountain regions, uh, Western North Carolina, which is normally not we don't we don't see that that area of the state does not see that type of um you know that type of rainfall so it has created so much devastation in that area so please you know think about north carolina keep your thoughts and prayers to all of you know the people that are in the western part of the state that are dealing with this flood because it is absolutely heartbreaking when you do see it um see it play out um on the news it is 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 terrible so while here in greensboro we you know we did have some rain we had a little bit not nothing too serious it seemed like most of the the devastation from that hurricane did hit the western part of the state but i just wanted to you know throw that out there and to let you know let you guys know that we are a strong community, even though I'm not from Western North Carolina, you know, we are doing everything we can as a state to, to help them as a country, everybody's coming together because, you know, like, you, like I said, you see it, it's, it's everywhere. So we're all coming together. We're helping out, um, you know, helping out our residents in Western Carolina. So they're going to get through this. We just take it one day at a time, but definitely keep them in your thoughts and prayers. But um, going back to flooding, flooding is something that you need to be mindful of, especially in certain areas. Usually we see, you know, flooding happen towards the coast. So places like Wilmington and the Outer Banks, um, you know, low lying areas are prone to floods and even some in, inland regions, um, such as parts of the Triangle area. And even here in the Triad can, um, experience flash flooding after a heavy rainfall. So this is why I always advise my clients to check the flood maps before making any real estate decisions. You don't want to end up in a home that is going to flood like every time a storm comes by. 
But, you know, on a positive note, don't let that scare you off because North Carolina is a beautiful place to live. And the coast, along with the entire state, is breathtaking. You know, offering some of the most beautiful beaches in the country. We have the most beautiful mountains in the country. We are a great state. So with proper planning, you know, and flood insurance, you can enjoy all the perks of living, you know, near water or even if you don't live near water like I was just talking about, you have flood insurance. You know, that's something that, and I'm looking at flood insurance differently now, and I'm gonna talk to my clients about flood insurance a little differently also, because usually flood insurance is, you have to have it if you live in a flood prone area. But if you are living in an area that is not in a flood prone area, you don't need flood insurance. So just think about, I know I'm going back to Western Carolina, Western North, you know, North Carolina, but a lot of them are, weren't in flood areas. So they didn't have to have flood insurance. So that's just another thing to think about. But, you know, it's not a bad idea to invest in flood insurance because if something were to happen and there is some devastating flooding, as I've had clients, but their home was in a, a flood prone area that they chose to purchase, the home did have some flooding after a storm. That flood insurance was able to help them. You know, they put them in a room, put them in a hotel room while their home was being repaired. You know, it took care of the repairs in the home, replaced all of that. So flood insurance is definitely something worth you know, investigating. So next, let's stop talking about the flooding and the water and all of that. Let's go to a different topic. So number three is North Carolina can be hot and it can be humid. <laughs> so North Carolina has beautiful mild winters, especially here in the Piedmont Triad, but the summers, oh my gosh, they are on another level. They can be tough. Even for the residents that live here and that are used to it, is tough, trust me. It gets hot and humid with temperatures easily reaching the 90s and even higher during July and August. So the humidity can make it feel even hotter. And if you're not used to that type of weather, it can be overwhelming, but there is an upside. You will have plenty of opportunities to sit on your porch and sip on some of that sweet tea that we were talking about. But on another note, you know, the hot weather means you're not far from the perfect beach day. So you can easily, you know, if beaches are your thing, you can drive down to the beach, enjoy the beach. There are lots of, you know, outdoor activities that you can do here in North Carolina. There are, you know, we have splash pads at the parks. We have wet and wild, um, you know, it's a water park here in Greensboro. So even with the heat, there's always something to do. There's a way to cool down. There's, we have so many different pools, you know, pool communities. And if you're purchasing a property and you know, that property may even have a community pool in the neighborhood. So even though it's hot, it's sticky, it's, it, it can be a little tough. There are ways to definitely cool down. So next on our list is tourist traffic. So tourism is a major industry here in North Carolina, especially for cities like Asheville, Charlotte, or, you know, going towards the coast with millions of vis visitors coming here annually. So during peak seasons, especially in the summer and fall, traffic can be pretty hectic, you know, particularly in mountain towns where everyone wants to see those beautiful fall leaves or they are heading to the beach. So expect to deal with longer waits at the restaurants, busier highways during those tourist seasons. But there is a silver lining. With all the tourists coming to the state, it does fuel the economy, bringing in revenue. That helps, you know, maintain infrastructure and it supports local businesses. So it, it is a win. <laughs> Plus, as a local, you'll know when the best times are to visit those areas. So for me, my family and I like to go to the beach, but we don't always go during peak season, like in the summer. We like to go in the fall, like September, um, because in September, it's still busy. There's still people there, but it's not as busy, you know, so we're going during the off season. So it's it's nicer. You know, the weather is still, still warm, so you can still enjoy the beach. You can still go to the pool. You can still do all the outdoor beach activities, but with less of a crowd. So that's just something to think about too. 
But before we touch on our next reason why you may want to reconsider moving to North Carolina, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Lynette Selby and I am your trusted YouTube realtor right here in beautiful Greensboro, North Carolina. And if you are thinking about making a move to the area, buying a home, or if you're just curious about what's available, I would love to chat with you. Feel free to reach out. We can schedule a discovery call and then we can discuss your goals. I can answer any questions that you may have and we can explore your options for purchasing a home in this beautiful city. Okay, that's enough. Now let's get back to the video. <laughs> so next we're gonna talk about critters and nature. Not my favorite topic. So critters are a part of the package when you live in North Carolina. So be prepared. Be prepared to see snakes, to see mice, see rats, bunnies, all kinds of critters, you're gonna see them. And this one for me, it takes the cake because my husband, he is from North Carolina, but he is from Eastern North Carolina and they have alligators. So when he told me, you know, he used to tell me stories about him growing up and how they would catch alligators. And I'm like, no way, you did not catch an alligator. But seriously, yes, they did. I, when I go visit them, there's they always see alligators. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So. You'll see it all in our beautiful state, but in our state is filled with some incredible wildlife and nature. So you'll, you know, you'll see deer, you'll see beautiful birds. Again, Eastern North Carolina, you'll see bears. I have seen a bear like in a field, just kind of walking across the field, walking across the street. I'm telling you that the, the alligator and the bears, those two for me kind of, I was like, oh my goodness. But you will see bear, you can see bears throughout the state, not just in Eastern North Carolina. There have been bear sightings here in, um, in the triad. There have been sightings in Raleigh, you know, so you'll see, you know, bear, you can see a bear anywhere in North Carolina. So number six on our list about things that you might want to, to, to think about before moving are mosquitoes and termites. Oh my goodness. We got mosquitoes, a lot of them. I still have, like you think because it's fall, like you wouldn't have any mosquito bites. I still have mosquito bites. Like they are still out there and they are still biting. There are termites here in um, North Carolina and there are even cockroaches here in North Carolina. But here's the positive side to all of that. There are effective ways to deal with them. So regular pest control treatments, you know, maintaining your yard can keep these little nuisances at bay. <laughs> Plus, if you enjoy spending time outside, it may be a good idea to invest in some mosquito repellent. That can make a big difference. So number seven is the slower pace of life. So one thing that you will definitely notice here in North Carolina is that things move a bit slower, especially if you are relocating from a big city like New York or Los Angeles. Even in bigger cities like Raleigh and Charlotte, people kind of tend to take their time. So people go at a slower speed and that could be both a blessing and a curse depending on your lifestyle. So if you're used to the hustle and bustle, then you may be a little bit frustrated by the laid back approach and how laid back people are here. But you know, that slower pace gives you time to breathe. It gives you time to relax and actually enjoy life. For me, it's perfect for those looking to escape the constant rush of those bigger cities and kind of embrace the more balanced way of living. Next up is Southern hospitality. Now this one is my absolute favorite because Southern hospitality is not just like a stereotype, it's a real deal thing here in North Carolina. We are full of friendly, welcoming people for the most part. <laughs> so whether you're new to the area or you've been here for years, you will find it easy to make friends and kind of feel part of the community. People will wave. I'm telling you, like when you go up and down the street, every time people will throw up their little hand, they'll wave at you. They'll say hello. People will just come up and strike up a conversation for no reason. It's just, that's just kind of how we do it here in North Carolina. I mean, not everybody is like that, but it is so not uncommon to be at the store and you're standing in line and you make eye contact with somebody and then you're having a conversation. So it just, 
that's just kind of how we do it here. It makes you feel home to me. Well, to me, North Carolina is home because I've been here my whole life. But my clients that have relocated from other areas, they feel the same way. They feel like North Carolina makes them feel like they are at home. You know, it's it's a good place. I promise. So next up, we're going to talk about pollen. So pollen is bad. It, it is terrible. There's pollen everywhere. And in the spring, it can be intense. It's like I said, it's everywhere. Everything is coated in this thick layer of yellow dust. It is horrible. But the bright side is that this is the same pollen responsible for the beautiful spring season. So once the pollen kind of washes away, you're left with such beautiful greenery. You know, you see the blooming flowers and some of the most beautiful landscapes in the entire country, in my opinion anyway. But if you do suffer from seasonal allergies, make sure you keep your Claritin and your Zyrtec with you at all times because you're gonna need them, trust me. I don't even suffer from seasonal allergies too too bad, but some some seasons are worse than others and I definitely have to keep my, my Claritin on me when because you can you can feel your ears, they get to itching, your throat gets to itching and you're, you're sneezing. It can be yucky. But like I said, keep your your um, your Claritin or your Zyrtec on you and you'll be just fine. <laughs> so I got a bonus one and that's the cost of living and the wages. So the cost of living in North Carolina is generally lower than the national average, which is is great. However, that lower cost does come with lower wages and that is not great. So unless you're in a high demand industry or bringing a job with you, you might find that the salaries here are a little lower than what you're used to. And this can make it tough to afford housing, especially in popular areas like Raleigh, Durham, and Charlotte, where homes, you know, those home prices have been climbing steadily over the last couple of years. So that is definitely something to consider. So there you have it. Those are my things that you need to be aware of before you commit and make that move to North Carolina. So don't get me wrong. I love living here. Like I said, been here my whole life, ain't going nowhere. And I'm sure many of you will love it too, but it is important to go into a move with your eyes wide open, especially when it comes to some of the challenges that you may face. So if you're still thinking about making a move to North Carolina, or if you have questions about relocating to the area, make sure you reach out. My team and I would love to help you navigate the process and find the perfect spot for you to call home. And also I have a relocation guide for Greensboro. So if you want a copy of that, all you gotta do is just type like relocation guide in the comments and I'll make sure to send that over to you. But thank you so much for watching. You know what I need you to do. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more real estate tips and updates. But until next week, y'all have a great one and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.